What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is Saturday, August 18th, 2018. Anybody who's new to this channel and new to this page, um, what I do here is I go over a breakdown of the Forex technical analysis of the markets. I'm going to be going through and breaking down all of the individual indexes for the major currencies, the top seven. I'm going to go over all of the... Um, U.S. dollar major crosses, they're called, which is all these seven pairs pinned against each other in the U.S. dollar. And then the currency crosses, which is all the um, minor currency pair crosses. So the New Zealand dollar, Aussie, um, pound, yen, euro, Swiss franc, dollar, all of them against each other. And I'm going to go over my watch list. So purely technical analysis breakdown video. I go over all the charts that I'm watching this week. I go over the S&P 500, the U.S. stock equity markets. I go over oil quickly. I go over gold. Um really just a full-on in-depth technical analysis breakdown. We had a great week last week. We caught a lot of the pullbacks we were looking for. A lot of these pullbacks and rallies are starting to happen. These trend trades are starting to get into good positions for us to enter shorts and longs to catch the next position of the trend. So we really have a nice week starting to set up for us here. We have a lot of pairs on the watch list, so make sure you stay tuned to the video till the end. We have a lot of awesome setups we're watching. So um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. I hope you're getting something out of it. I take a lot of time out of my day to make these, so I really hope you guys are getting some enjoyment out of it. Uh, make sure you guys check out the website, corefxtrading.com. Also, shoot me an email at corey at corefxtrading.com if you want to try. We have a free trial going on right now for a new technical analysis group that we've launched where we share constantly trade ideas throughout the week. We host these weekly technical talk webinars live and open them up to questions and answers at the end. And um, we also have a video vault coming with a bunch of um, educational content in it. So make sure you reach out to me if you want to check out and try out this new technical analysis group. It's free through the end of the month. It's going to turn into a $50 a month subscription fee starting September 1st. But right now it is free. If you want to check it out, come into the room and see what it's all about. Reach out to me and I will catch you in there. I'll add you to the group, see how you like it. But I'm going to go ahead and hop into the charts now, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Any of my returning viewers, love you guys. Thanks for coming by. Anybody that's new, I appreciate you taking the time to come and watch this. I really hope you get something out of it and enjoy it. Turn into a subscriber and tune in every week. Thank you guys. Now catching the charts. All right. So jumping into the charts here, we're going to start off with the Dixie, which is the U.S. dollar index. Um, as you guys can see, we were in an ascending triangle here, right? We broke the downtrend. We were in an uptrend. 20, I mean the 50 SMA crossed above the 200 SMA. 20 above the 50, above the 200, great SMA placement for an uptrend. We were setting higher highs, higher lows, and then this roof right here at 95.50 was holding, right? So we had resistance holding here while we were setting higher lows. So this is a trend continuation pattern, a breakout pattern, what we call an ascending triangle, right? So that the top is ascending, the bottom I mean is ascending closer, we're getting tighter and tighter price action, and then boom, we had this pop out, the dollar broke out higher. Thursday, Friday, last week we did get a little bit of a sell-off, that's a good thing. We want to be able to buy the dollar on these dips, so um, I'll be watching the dollar at the start of this week, we might get a little more of a pullback, dollar might keep coming back to retest this 95.50, and then I'll definitely be looking for dollar long opportunities off of that. Um, from the dollar, we can then take it on to the euro. Very similar, um, but an inverse looking chart from the US dollar. So the Euro and the dollar are the two by far heaviest traded pairs in Forex. It makes up about 60% of the volume in Forex trading is the Euro and the dollar versus each other, the, the Euro dollar pair. Um, so these two charts are gonna look very similar because they are basically weighed against each other. So um, the, what the Euro is doing, the dollar is typically gonna look the opposite. So we have this descending triangle where we had a breakout and it's now rallying. So we expect to see again, just like with the dollar, a rally maybe a little bit higher. Um, this could just flip and roll over, but a little bit higher, expect to rally, and then you know start looking for short opportunities in the euro could be the play there. Yen, um, this one has been pretty sloppy. We thought after this lower low here, we were going to pull back, retest this, and continue lower. Um, we looked like we were going to start to, but then we immediately kept going higher. Um, so the yen's been pushing higher. It's been a really, really tricky market as far as risk on risk off trade wars all these kinds of things going on in the world the yen responds really really heavily to what's going on macroeconomically in the world what we call the risk on risk off theme um basically you know if the stock markets are doing good investors feel good about what they're investing in then they'll take their money and put it into riskier assets like stocks and higher growth currencies and stuff and they'll take them out of safer assets like the yen and gold 
Uh, that's why when you see stocks doing good, you typically see the yen doing bad and vice versa. But that, it's kind of been a mixed story lately. Um, so the yen is breaking up above a strong support turn resistance zone now. It has broken the 50 SMA. The 20 SMA is now curling up about to cross the 50. So we are seeing some trend changing type of moves here. We could see the yen switch back up to an uptrend now. The 200 SMA is a big resistance overhead here. Also lining up with the 87 support resistance level. So I will watch for a break of that, but the yen is not really telling us anything too clear as of right now. British pound, uh, been still in this nice downtrend, set this lower low last week. Thought we could this week come up and set a lower high, um, but as you can see, with all five days this week, the pound really was virtually flat on the week, right? So not much movement at all. We opened pretty much where we, we closed pretty much where we opened, so um, pretty uneventful week with the pound but we are still bearish the pound i just think we'll get a little bit of a rally before we continue to fall off uh, but as you can see we are in a nice downtrend moving averages are sloped nicely spaced nicely ordered nicely 20 below the 50 below the 200 so the downtrend is beautiful right now we just need you know not to chase falling prices catch those rallies and short off that canadian dollar um this is another one that's kind of just been chopping around lately we are in this uh bear flag wedge pattern here and it looked like we were starting to break out last thursday but it did open and close open and come back up in here off the uh cad cpi numbers so just really waiting for us to see where this is going you can see we broke above this this strong area in here so that is a little more bullish we are above the 50 sma now it looks like we could be instead of this being a pattern this could be reversing um, so we got to keep an eye on this, but again, no, no clear story with the, the Canadian dollar, anything too clear. Uh, Swiss franc, another one that we've been sitting in this basing pattern, a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders forming here. Um, that's why I kind of have these arrows drawn, drawn either way. This week, we were totally flat again on the week with this pair as well. As you can see, we really are at a point where we could break out either direction. This could reverse trend, break this upper trend line and push higher, or we could continue the trend and push lower and break this strong weekly support. Uh, until we get either one of them, though, we're not going to really have any strong conviction one way or the other where this pair is going. And the Aussie. Nice break out of this bear flag pattern we had here. Push lower. It has now started to rally. We did see some strong Aussie on Friday. That was what helped push our pound Aussie pair that we had shouted out in the technical chat room. Um, but as you can see, this is rallying. I would like to see it rally up to 73.50 up here and then look for continued shorts as we are in a nice downtrend with this pair and would like to see this downtrend continue. New Zealand dollar, as you guys can see here, very similar type setup. We've been in this downtrend on the weekly. We broke below this very strong weekly support a few weeks ago. Last week, we had this very strong bearish breakdown again. And this week, we had a little bit of a rally to fill that bearish candle up a little bit. As you can see, Thursday, Friday, we started to rally back up a bit. So I am looking for shorting New Zealand dollar as well up here at around the 67 level. That strong support that we broke. So uh, bearish with this pair as well. Real quick, S&P 500. This is the U.S. stock market. This is an index of a basket of the top 500 stocks in the U.S. Um, as you can see, we have been in a nice bullish trend again. You know, we had this very strong bear market. Then we had some sell-offs and some really choppy price action. Volatility had picked up again, but now we're back to this slow moving um, Uptrend we got here and price is continuously setting higher highs We are now back under the all-time record highs as you can see here with this 2890 to 2900 area um, So this is certainly something we want to watch if price breaks up above this all-time high level we could see a nice strong pop higher and uh, As we know all these financial markets are related the yen is the most closely related to this market, so um, definitely something we want to keep an eye on. Gold continues to sell off, really, really, really just continues to get crushed. Um, as you guys can see, we came all the way down here to 111. It still has plenty of room to the downside. Coming down to 107 would be the next target, um, but you know, again, we don't want to catch a falling knife. We don't want to chase things as they're falling off hard. We want to wait for a rally, get in at better retail, not retail pricing, which would be down here, wholesale pricing. You know, get in at better pricing up here, look for shorts, and then ride the next wave to the downside. So gold is still continuing to get crushed. Oil also has had some trend reversing type moves now. We broke $66 a barrel, broke this daily trend line, sold off this week, but this 200 SMA acted as support, as you can see here, right around the 614 support as well. I mean, $64 a barrel, 
support right here as well. So um, oil, I do think, might roll over here. Uh, it wasn't a nice uptrend, and we were thinking it was going to go higher when we were here, but this resistance at $70 a barrel held, and price is now selling off reversing trend. Again, this is very closely related to CAD, so this is why, one of the reasons we watch oil, Canadian dollar. The Canadian economy is very oil dependent, so what oil does has a direct relevance and uh, correlation to the, the Canadian dollar, so that's definitely something we want to be keeping an eye on. Alrighty, so switching over to the main pairs starting with the euro us dollar as you guys can see we broke out of this nice strong bear pennant here pushed all the way down dollar 13 bounced off of there now as we are expecting last week i mean the beginning of this week i called for you know a rally we need some kind of a pullback before we can get long on this pair so we have a very nice zone in here we can look for long shorts off of and we have this very strong zone up here that i have marked with this blue weekly level so we have a couple different target zones for sells we do want to wait for our confirmation. We do want to wait for price to show us more evidence of a reversal happening. You know, so maybe what we can do is what I like doing with core effects and teaching in the course is we can draw this counter trend line here. And maybe we have price continue to rally first few days of the week, find resistance here at this area, and then break this trend line and come down. That would be a nice place to look for a trade with this pair. Um, so, you know, just you got to build your strategy and have a set plan that you follow, but you need some kind of confirmation. But this is the kind of setups we're looking for. Trending pairs, set a new lower, lower, higher, high, made a new push, and then recovers off of that, get some profit taken, get some bouncing off that, and catch the next move lower. That's what we want to catch with these momentum trend following trades. Pound dollar continues to fall. We have hit this weekly support here marked with this blue line. And we are looking for more of a bounce. I have a couple areas marked here as well where we could bounce up to here before shorting or bounce all the way up to here before shorting. Uh, not looking to do anything this pair. I don't counter trend trade. Some of you might be buying this, this strong move lower, catching that mean reversion, that correction trade, uh, bounce off that weekly support. That's okay. That's just not my style. I trade in the direction of the trend, so I'm going to wait for a pullback. I'm going to wait for a lower high to form here and then get in that short and try to catch that next wave to the downside. Dollar cat. This was one we were looking for longs with, and we are still um, keeping that option on the table. This is where invalidation would be for a potential long here. So price breaking below this red box, or even below this support here, if you take out the four hour, um, even below this support here could be invalidation. You see this nice double top that formed when we thought we could have broken this trend line. But I do still feel bullish about this pair if we are able to pull back and break this trend line. So as you guys can see, this is a buy region, but we wanted to see a break, pull back, and then buy and catch this long. Um, it never ended up breaking. It ended up rejecting this trend line and resistance again and just selling off. So we will keep this valid for now, um, looking to break this resistance. Again, taking it to this four hour, you can see better this resistance right here. Right, We'd want to see a breakout above here to then catch that pullback maybe to go long there. Um, but this is still you know, a valid watch for this. Uh, bullish pat flag pattern to break and continue to push to the upside. Dollar Japanese yen, another one we are looking for short reversals here. So you got a strong zone right in here. We're looking for a break of now we're sitting on a strong support again. Switching to the four hour, you can see what I'm talking about in here. So we're sitting on a strong support zone and price is reversing trend here. We are switching to the downside. As you guys can see, this trend line was broken. 50 SMA was broken. Structure here was broken with this push down. Um, and we're really just starting to roll over with this pair here. So we could see price roll over. I've got these two target zones marked. One of them down here at 109. One of them up here at around 109.50. For this pair to roll over. So definitely something we want to keep an eye on for shorts with the dollar yen. Dollar Swiss franc, nothing really. This is pretty similar looking chart to the Swiss franc index we just went over. We've got a lot of just stagnant price action, a lot of consolidation going on here. This is good for when we do get a breakout because usually a lot of momentum will come. And once that, that tight range consolidation has broken out, usually a lot of money will come in and that, that'll make a strong push. But we really don't have any too clear direction right now as to which way this could break out. Um, this resistance at dollar level parity has been holding pretty strong. You can see price tried to break above it multiple times and it's just gotten rejected. 
So that resistance could hold and this could reverse, but we also could see it finally push and break through that resistance. So we really just want to wait for confirmation either way. And if it breaks above, maybe we can catch that pullback long. If it breaks below, maybe we can catch that pullback short. Aussie dollar, US dollar giving us what we wanted to see this week. We made this strong push lower. Now we're starting to get this rally. Short opportunities up here around 73.50 are going to be our ideal option. I would love to see it come back, pull up here. Moving averages would catch up by then. We'd hit this really strong support resistance weekly zone here and also could tap this trend line. That would be a beautiful sell opportunity. So Aussie dollar is for sure on the radar this week. Throw a little flag on that pair so we can keep an eye on it. New Zealand dollar as well, very similar. In a downtrend, set this lower low, broke this counter trend line. That was a nice short there. Then finally did break this support, sold off all the way down to here, has now started pulling back. So this is another one we are going to be looking for short opportunities out of this gray box would be ideal, but we also could look for some short opportunities before then if price action suggests it. So we could throw a little trend line on this guy too, just so we have to keep an eye on it. So this is a good uh, pullback zone as well. We could use this trend line here, look for price to pull back to it, and that could be a nice shorting opportunity for us with the New Zealand dollar. So that is another pair that I'm watching. All right, now switching it over to the actual watch list I'm watching this week now. New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, very similar to what we just went over with all of New Zealand. Set a lower low, price broke out to the downside. We did consolidate a lot this week, but we're starting to rally back up. Wait for this rally to finish out, maybe second half of this week, maybe not till next week, maybe early on in this week, um, but wait for this rally to finish out and then look for shorting opportunities to catch that next move to the downside. Euro yen, another pretty similar situation. We are on strong support, so this one I'm definitely going to want more of a um, rally, but you can see here this would be a nice strong zone from prior structure. We got a psychological 127 resistance level here. So price coming back up into this zone could present a good opportunity to short this pair as well to the downside. You can see this weekly trend line is being respected as well here. So I do think this bounce will continue to come through. Aussie yen broke below this strong weekly level has been consolidating, taking it down to a smaller time frame. You can see this consolidation much more. It is breaking above here, so I think we'll see a bit of a rally off of this. I think this Aussie will rally up. Maybe we'll rally to around this 81.50 area. And then just like with the other things, we are going to be looking for a, shooting op a shorting opportunity now off of this level. CHF, JPY. Um, this one is actually reversed. We had this inverse head and shoulders forming that we thought we were going to break out. But we double topped off this 200 SMA and have sold off since. Broke to 50 SMA, broke this trend line, now breaking below this support level here. And um, really now we have some clear direction to the downside. We have some uh, shorting opportunities coming with this support being broken. So you want to either, if you trade breakouts, you want to look for a break of this support. If you trade pullbacks, wait for it to break lower, then pull back up to this area maybe to then try shorten it. You can aim for it down here at around 109 being a longer term target, but I do think this pair is starting to roll over now and will continue to. Pound Aussie is a nice trade alert that we had this week in the new technical course group. Um, as you guys can see here, we had a really nice lower low push formed, price rallied up retested this strong resistance level. This is an ideal setup for what we've been talking about. So we have this, this pullback that we had price set a lower low down here, then price rallied up. As you can see, we had multiple rejection wicks off this zone. We had price rejecting here. We had a nice doji candle. Then we had a nice shooting star candle and price has sold off since. We sold off really nicely right into the target one. We still have a lot of pips to go down here to target two. So this trade is still valid. We could see a little bit of a bounce here after this to start the week and then continuation to the downside. But this was a beautiful setup that we had here. This double top off rejection dropped right after. This has been a beautiful setup. Hitting target one right there. Taking the pound Swiss franc. Another one we've been in a strong downtrend. Hit a strong zone here. Got a bullish engulfing showing us a little bit of bullish momentum bouncing off this support. We are going to wait for this to rally up more and then start looking for shorting opportunities. So this is... Last week, we were calling for the need for a lot of pullbacks on a lot of these pairs. Pound's been getting killed. New Zealand's been getting killed. Dollar's been strong. Um, we've been waiting for a pullback on a lot of these pairs because these pairs were just either falling or rising. And we didn't, we, as we were saying, we don't want to chase these strong moving pairs. So um, 
we're getting the pullbacks and the rallies that we're looking for. And this week looks like it could be setting up for a great opportunity. As we're seeing all these pullbacks and rallies, this can enter us into these trend continuation moves later in the week, maybe even until next week, but the setups are coming. Euro New Zealand, this is another trade that we're waiting to trigger this week. Never triggered. But um, as you can see, we set this higher high, price pulled back. We found support here on the 200 SMA here on the four hour. And you can see looking left, this is a strong resistance, 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 broken. Now support, support, support. It's not looking too good here. The trade never did trigger. This resistance was the entry, never did trigger. But um, as you can see, this is still holding this support here. And we have this uh, entry point up here, target up here. So this trade setup is possible. Um, we just want to really wait for this to trigger. This is one of those things where I tell you guys, we develop a watch list, we have a plan, we have a strategy. We just need to have triggers and entry points set in place that we don't just enter because of um, you know a pullback happened. We don't just enter because it looks like it's gonna be a breakout. We have a set strategy we follow. And this trade never triggered, so it was never valid, but it is still on the table and a potential for this week if we see a reversal off of here. EuroCAD is another pair that we had called out. Um, Started to work out for us on Friday, but uh, got a little bit stagnant. Did reject this zone initially with this strong bearish engulfing. It was the 50 SMA, I mean the 50 Fibonacci level. Also tapped the 50 SMA here on this trend line. Um, you know, set a lower low, rallied, perfect pullback, 50%. Started to get this bearish engulfing. I do think that we will see this pair at the beginning of this week make its way back down to here. So I do think that this is definitely possible. Um, however, Right now, it's just rallying back off of this. And the entry point already happened, but it is does still have a lot of room to the downside. And this is something that we are still watching to ride lower. Euro Swiss Franc, another pair that we have a nice setup occurring here. This is another one where it's been falling off hard and we've been looking for a rally. So we have this rally now, back to back bullish days. We wanna look for resistance to be found now and look for shorting opportunities to present ourselves. in this pair, Aussie New Zealand, this is another pair that we are looking for trades that haven't triggered yet. As you can see, we set this very strong, nice higher high, strong bullish push here, throwing our Fibonacci out here. We can see after this strong move, go from swing low to swing high. We've now pulled back to this 50% Fib level. As you can see, we've got back to back spinning top candles. These are indecision candles. So these are candles showing us that the bulls and the bears are in agreement and there's no one particularly winning which way price is going. As you can see here, we have this pullback, support was found, but the resistance was never broken, right? So we never had that trigger tr that trade triggered. Another one where we were waiting for a trade to trigger, never did, still on the table, still on the watch list for this week, a trade we are certainly looking for, but I'd like to see a nice bullish engulfing candle trigger this trade and close, showing us that bullish momentum's coming back in. But we have this very strong support level here, so I think price is able to stay above it and make that next push higher, but we're gonna have to watch and we'll see if we get those triggers. Aussie Swiss franc, another one, beautiful break lower pullback. Another perfect example here where we can probably apply a fib and see from this last push lower, swing high down to swing low. You can see we're right at the 50% fib again. So 50% Fibonacci is all over the board right now with these pullbacks. And you can see here we had a nice push to the downside, a nice bull rally. Now is when we want to start looking for shorts. And this is a good opportunity to try to find them. So another pair we're going to be looking for shorts. Heavy watch list this week, guys, just so you know, we got a lot of pairs we're watching. All of them are very, very similar setups. As you guys can see, again, we had a nice strong lower low made. As you can see, this Fibonacci is drawn here as well. Swing high to swing low, pulled back to the 50. Nice doji indecision candle right on this prior support turn resistance. This is where we want to start looking for shorts to catch this move to the downside now. As you can see here, we did have a nice bearish engulfing. That is a nice... Um, signal if you guys are using candlestick patterns as your trade triggers but you can see here that was a nice little bearish rejection off that zone to give us a, a potential move to the downside here with this aussie cad pair new zealand cad another very similar setup strong lower low made two day rally indecision candle doji formed now we can look for short opportunities to catch that move to the downside and finally new zealand swiss franc very similar as well so we have a strong lower low formed. Price is rallying back up to this strong zone. Look for shorting opportunities now off of this rally. And that's where we try to catch our next trend continuation move to the downside. All right, guys. So that does it with these technical analysis charts. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoy this content. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're a new viewer, I appreciate it. Check out all the other content on the YouTube page. If you are a returning subscriber and viewer, I appreciate it. I hope you guys find some value in these videos. I hope you have a great trading week, and I'll see you guys next time.